So one of, one of my kind of intellectual heroes is the author James Baldwin. Um, and he would have had probably a, a kind of surprising answer about who is it we need to trust. Um, and one of the things Baldwin was always trying to get people to think about was um, trusting yourself in some sense. Um, and why is that really an important idea? Well, one of the reasons why I think we look for villains and heroes is because we think that they'll kind of embody the things that we no longer have to kind of debate mm -hmm. about internally. Like, right. look, there goes the good person, there goes the bad person. Right. They'll right. duke it out, whoever wins. That's the consequence right. we're right. going to accept. And then all of a sudden, the capacity for judgment is removed from ourselves. And what James Baldwin always wanted people to do is actually yeah. to kind of be responsible for thinking on your own about what our duties are to each other and to ourselves as people who share a society with others, a society in which people flourish, but some people are doomed, right? Um, and so, but he thought that a lot, what, what happens in this country um, is a fleeing away from the kinds of things that would, that would compel us to think very strongly about the most problematic issues we face. So one of Baldwin's famous refrains was that he thought white Americans were constantly trying to flee from history. Because once you look at history in America, it's really hard to turn away from what it is your responsibilities are today, right? Because it's not just something that happened 300 years ago. Reverberations are active, right? Uh, they're not just merely historical echoes, but they are really live rever reverberations that reproduce themselves every time we exercise privilege in one way or another, right? So, but we tend not to trust ourselves, and so we try to just buy into this idea of the privilege that we have and the heuristics, the kind of standings we have for how it is we should move in society unthinkingly because mm -hmm. the idea of me being the person who's going to try and work out a problem. Right. So very, very kind of simply on this, I give lectures all the time at different universities and I always get bright-eyed you know, grad students or undergraduates saying, what can I do to make a difference? And these are really well-intentioned questions. And the person who asks me that question always thinks that there's something big they have to do. They think they have to help organize and march. They think they have to be a leader of a diet. And I always tell students, actually, the most courageous thing you can do is deal with the person in front of you and with yourself. That this, this idea that we have to do something big is actually, in some sense, an evasion of the toughest work we have. Let's look within ourselves and figure out how is it I relate to people around me, not just what do I tell people to do, what kind of example do I set, but how am I responsible for the words that I use that affect the person right in front of me and vice versa. And calling that person to account when they've obviously done something that is not sustainable or justified. Right.